The Christian Church is a term used by him to refer to the whole group of people belonging to the Christian religious tradition throughout history. In this understanding, which is generally used by Protestants, Christian Church does not refer to a particular Christian denomination, but to the body of all believers. Others believe the term Christian Church or Church applies only to a specific historic Christian institution. Thus, some Christians identify the Christian Church to be a visible structure, while others understand the Church to be an invisible reality, not identified with any earthly structure or individual denomination. Others equate the Church with particular groups that share certain essential elements of doctrine and practice though divided on other points of doctrine and government. Most English translations of the New Testament generally use the word church as a translation of the ancient Greek term kappa kappa lambda eta sigma iota alpha found in the original Greek texts, which generally meant an assembly. This term appears in two verses of the Gospel of Matthew, 24 verses of the Acts of the Apostles. 58 verses of the Pauline Epistles, 2 verses of the Letter to the Hebrews, 1 verse of the Epistle of James, 3 verses of the Third Epistle of John, and 19 verses of the Book of Revelation. In total, Kappa Kappa Lambda Eta Sigma Iota Alpha appears in the New Testament text 114 times, although not every instance is a technical reference to the Church. In the New Testament, the term Kappa Kappa Lambda Eta Sigma Iota Alpha is used for local communities as well as in a universal sense to mean all believers. Traditionally, only Orthodox believers are considered part of the true Church but convictions of what is Orthodox have long varied. As many churches consider themselves to be Orthodox and other Christians to be heterodox, the four marks of the Church first expressed in the Nicene Creed are unity, holiness, catholicity, and apostolicity. Etymology The Greek word ekklesia, literally, called out, or, called forth, and commonly used to indicate a group of individuals called together for some function, in particular an assembly of the citizens of a city, as in Acts chapter 19 verses 32 to 41, is the New Testament term referring to the Christian church. Most Romance and Celtic languages use derivations of this word, either inherited or borrowed from the Latin form ecclesia. The English language word church is from the Old English word cerisk, derived from West Germanic asterisk karika, which in turn comes from the Greek kappa upsilon rho iota alpha kappa eta kuriaki, meaning of the Lord. Kuriaki in the sense of church is most likely a shortening of kappa upsilon rho iota alpha kappa rho micron kappa iota alpha kuriaki oikia or kappa kappa lambda eta sigma iota alpha kappa upsilon rho iota alpha kappa eta ecclesia kuriaki. Christian churches were sometimes called Kappa Upsilon Rho Iota Alpha Kappa Rho Micron Nu Kuriacon in Greek starting in the 4th century. But Ecclesia and Beta Alpha Sigma Iota Lambda Iota Kappa Eta Bis alike were more common. The word is one of many direct Greek to Germanic loans of Christian terminology via the Goths. The Slavic terms for church are via the Old High German cognate Shiriar, used by early Christians. In using the word Kappa Kappa Lambda Eta Sigma Iota Alpha, early Christians were employing a term that, while it designated the assembly of a Greek city-state, in which only citizens could participate, was traditionally used by Greek-speaking Jews to speak of Israel, the people of God, and that appeared in the Septuagint in the sense of an assembly gathered for religious reasons, often for a liturgy. In that translation Kappa Kappa Lambda Eta Sigma Iota Alpha stood for the Hebrew word, which however it also rendered as Sigma Upsilon Mu Alpha Gamma Omega Gamma Eta, the two Greek words being largely synonymous until Christians distinguished them more clearly. The term Kappa Kappa Lambda Eta Sigma Iota Alpha appears in only two verses of the Gospels, in both cases in the Gospel of Matthew, when Jesus says to Simon Peter, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The church is the community instituted by Christ. 
but in the other passage the church is the local community to which one belongs. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, the term is used much more frequently in other parts of the New Testament, designating, as in the Gospel of Matthew, either an individual local community or all of them collectively. Even passages that do not use the term kappa kappa lambda eta sigma iota alpha may refer to the church with other expressions as in the first 14 chapters of the Epistle to the Romans, in which Kappa Kappa Lambda Eta Sigma Iota Alpha is totally absent, but which repeatedly uses the cognate word Kappa Lambda Eta Tau Omicron Iota. The Church may be referred to also through images traditionally employed in the Bible to speak of the people of God such as the image of the vineyard used particularly in the Gospel of John. The New Testament never uses the adjectives Catholic or universal with reference to the church, but does indicate that the local communities are one church, that Christians must always seek to be in concord, that the Gospel must extend to the ends of the earth and to all nations, that the church is open to all peoples and must not be divided, etc. The first recorded application of Catholic, or universal, to the Church is by Ignatius of Antioch in about 107 in his Epistle to the Smyrnians, chapter 8. Wherever the bishop appears, there let the people be, as wherever Jesus Christ is. There is the Catholic Church, Church Fathers like Ignatius of Antioch, Ionius. Tertullian and Cyprian held to the view that the Christian Church was a visible entity, not an invisible body of believers. History The early Church originated in Roman Judea in the 1st century AD, founded on the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth who is believed by Christians to be the Son of God and Christ the Messiah. It is usually thought of as beginning with Jesus or Apostles. According to Scripture Jesus commanded them to spread his teachings to all the world, springing out of Second Temple Judaism from Christianity's earliest days. Christians accepted non-Jews without requiring them to fully adopt Jewish customs. Acts chapters 10 to 15. The parallels in the Jewish faith of the proselytes, God-fearers, and Noahide law. See also biblical law in Christianity. Some think that conflict with Jewish religious authorities quickly led to the expulsion of the Christians from the synagogues in Jerusalem. The church gradually spread throughout the Roman Empire and beyond, gaining major establishments in cities such as Jerusalem, Antioch, and Edessa. It also became a widely persecuted religion. It was condemned by the Jewish authorities as a heresy. The Roman authorities persecuted it because, like Judaism, its monotheistic teachings were fundamentally foreign to the polytheistic traditions of the ancient world and of challenge to the imperial cult. The church grew rapidly until finally legalized and then promoted by emperors Constantine and Theodosius I in the 4th century as the state church of the Roman Empire. Already in the 2nd century, Christians denounced teachings that they saw as heresies, especially Gnosticism but also Montanism. Ignatius of Antioch at the beginning of that century and Ionius at the end saw union with the bishops as the test of correct Christian faith. After legalization of the Church in the 4th century, the debate between Arianism and Trinitarianism, with the emperors favoring now one side now the other, was a major controversy. Christianity as Roman State Religion on February 27, 380 the Roman Empire officially adopted the Trinitarian version of Christianity as the state church of the Roman Empire. Prior to this date, Constantius II and Valens had personally favored Arian or semi-Arian forms of Christianity. But Valens' successor Theodosius I supported the Trinitarian doctrine as expounded in the Nicene Creed from the First Council of Nicaea. On this date, Theodosius I decreed that only the followers of Trinitarian Christianity were entitled to be referred to as Catholic Christians. 
while all others were to be considered to be heretics, which was considered illegal. In 385, this new legal situation resulted, in the first case of many to come, in the capital punishment of a heretic, namely Priscillian condemned to death, with several of his followers, by a civil tribunal for the crime of magic. In the centuries of state-sponsored Christianity that followed, pagans and heretical Christians were routinely persecuted by the empire and the many kingdoms and countries that later occupied the place of the empire. But some Germanic tribes remained Arian well into the Middle Ages. The church within the Roman Empire was organized under metropolitan sees, with five rising to particular prominence and forming the basis for the Pentarchy proposed by Justinian I. Of these five, one was in the west and the rest in the east. Even after the split of the Roman Empire the church remained a relatively united institution. The church came to be a central and defining institution of the empire, especially in the East or Byzantine Empire, where Constantinople came to be seen as the center of the Christian world, owing in great part to its economic and political power. Once the Western Empire fell to Germanic incursions in the 5th century, the church became for centuries the primary link to Roman civilization for medieval Western Europe and an important channel of influence in the West, for the Eastern Roman, or Byzantine, emperors. While, in the West, the so-called Orthodox Church competed against the Arian Christian and pagan faiths of the Germanic rulers and spread outside what had been the Empire to Ireland. Germany, Scandinavia, and the Western Slavs. In the East, Christianity spread to the Slavs in what is now Russia, South Central and Eastern Europe. The reign of Charlemagne in Western Europe is particularly noted for bringing the last major Western Aryan tribes into communion with Rome, in part through conquest and forced conversion. Starting in the 7th century the Islamic Caliphates rose and gradually began to conquer larger and larger areas of the Christian world, accepting North Africa and most of Spain, Northern and Western Europe escaped largely unscathed by Islamic expansion, in great part because richer Constantinople and its empire acted as a magnet for the onslaught. The challenge presented by the Muslims would help to solidify the religious identity of Eastern Christians even as it gradually weakened the Eastern Empire. Even in the Muslim world, the Church survived albeit at times with great difficulty. Great Schism of 1054 Although there had long been frictions between the Bishop of Rome and the Eastern Patriarchs within the Byzantine Empire, Rome's changing allegiance from Constantinople to the Frankish King Charlemagne set the Church on a course towards separation. The political and theological divisions would grow until Rome and the East excommunicated each other in the 11th century ultimately leading to the division of the church into the Western and Eastern churches. In 1448, not long before the Byzantine Empire collapsed, the Russian church gained independence from the Patriarch of Constantinople, as a result of the redevelopment of Western Europe and the gradual fall of the Eastern Roman Empire to the Arabs and Turks. The final fall of Constantinople in 1453 resulted in Eastern scholars fleeing the Muslim hordes bringing ancient manuscripts to the West, which was a factor in the beginning of the period of the Western Renaissance there. Rome was seen by the Western Church as Christianity's heartland. Some Eastern churches even broke with Eastern Orthodoxy and entered into communion with Rome. Protestant Reformation in the 16th century The changes brought on by the Renaissance eventually led to the Protestant Reformation during which the Protestant Lutheran and the Reformed followers of Calvin, Huss, Zwingli, Melanchthon, Knox, and others split from the Catholic Church. At this time, a series of non-theological disputes also led to the English Reformation which led to the independence of the Church of England. Then, during the Age of Exploration and the Age of Imperialism, Western Europe spread the Catholic Church and the Protestant and Reformed Churches around the world, especially in the Americas. These developments in turn have led to Christianity being the largest religion in the world today.